they all fall silent. That's isn't it, yes. I've got a big red button that says we're live on Facebook. That means yep. it excellent. Mean... Possibly we're live Same on here. Facebook. If we are live on Facebook, welcome to anybody who uh, happens to be accidentally watching or even deliberately. <laughs> uh, welcome to tonight's event, which was uh, forever delayed from uh, last night. Yeah. Uh, where I'm very lucky to be joined by Mark Ellis and Gavin Chapel Bates, two musicians, songwriters, people I've known for a very long time, thinking about it together. I think I added up to 38 years. But that was <laughs> well, a, a mad guess. That's between them. Um, nearly that long, I should think. So what we're going to do is have some chat with both of them. They're both going to play a bit of music. We're going to start by watching a video so that during that time, anybody who's late to the gig can creep in without us uh, coughing disapprovingly. And <laughs> we might do that anyway. Sharing the stream at that point. And then I'll, so after the song, after the track, uh, we will um, have some questions with Gavin, I think. Gavin, do you want to tell us a bit about the, the track that you've chosen? Because I've forgotten to queue it up. <laughs> Oh, well, why, yeah, while you're doing that. Um, yeah. So it's from my last album. It's called Lovely Day. It, it's a um, felt like an appropriate song to start with because it's nice and cheery. And I think possibly we might need a bit of that at the moment. And it was filmed in Cambridgeshire in Wandlebury Woods. Um, possibly forced a few people that I know to dress up as animals for the day, which was is always a good way to spend a day, I think. Well, there's me thinking they were real animals. Right. <laughs> Sorry to ruin the illusion. Here we go. We'll be talking to the guys after this. Fingers crossed. I've ticked everything and it appears and it, you can hear it. Thank you for joining us on GCP1. Now we join Gavin Chapel Bates for this week's story time. Good evening and welcome to story time. This week's story was chosen by Gladys from Clacton-on-Sea. It's called Lovely Day. Yes. 
And that's all for this week, children. Tune in again next week to find out what happens to Badger, Squirrel, and the rest of the gang. Thank you for listening, and good night. way to start excellent well there we go before we get too political you know let's let's start there <laughs> <laughs> yes yes so thanks to everybody who's uh, joined us as you can see we're talking to uh, uh gavin chapel bates and mark ellis thanks to people who joined us it's good to see uh, some people watching people even from swansea hello erica who's joined so what's really good about these is it's people that don't know each other can join and uh, take part if anybody's got any questions or things they want to ask either of these two uh, please do I think we're going to start off, if it's all right, talking to both of you together, and then we're going to grill Gavin about one or two things and <laughs> watch some music and then do the same with Mark. So uh, t together, how, how are you uh, both uh, coping with lockdown situation? Have you been able to get on with writing, recording and playing? After you, Gavin. Oh, well, we, we could have a polite standoff here. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yeah. I mean, it's obviously weird. I'm sure everyone knows that. I think um, I think I probably been in an okay position compared to some people in terms of music yeah I mean it's a bit weird I, I'm used to playing kind of two or three times a weekend and going to bed at three o'clock and in the morning so that's a bit weird um me and Mark, Mark were talking yesterday music playing on stage is a bit of a catharsis you know a bit of release so not having that is difficult but at the same time I have used the time to do some writing which I wasn't intending to do so that's that's been nice from that perspective excellent uh, Mark yeah, I would uh, I'd basically echo what Gavin said. I think um, it, 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 you try and take the positives from a situation and it has kind of brought back me as a solo artist, as it were, because I kind of put that to bed um, working on another project called Elmer, which we'll sort of discuss later. Um, and I write for other people and stuff. Um, but I kind of, again, Gavin and I were talking yesterday and... Um, saying a lot of people have started up Patreon pages and things like that as kind of just a way to, obviously because income is a worry for a lot of musicians. Um, but it, so as well as kind of providing a little bit of that, it's also kind of just brought back my kind of self-confidence as, as an artist in my own right, as it were. So that's been really, that's the kind of positive thing. Um, and I've, I've continued to write for other people and, and stuff. So there's a lot of irons in the fire and just trying to make the most of the time that you've got really. Mm -hmm. do, do you find it hard to um, feel the uh, inspiration to write when you haven't got the physical audience, either of you? Mark first. Um, sometimes. I, I, so there are, it's weird. Some days I need to be absolutely just beside myself with sadness. <laughs> Something needs to have happened to me to kind of affect it. But I think actually, in particular, when I'm working with other people, because you've got kind of two brains working on something, First of all, there'll be ideas going into the pot that you wouldn't necessarily do yourself because that's the beauty of working with somebody else. But also, as long as one of you's having a good day, you'll be all right. <laughs> and someone will think your ideas are good ideas, you know. So um, by myself, certainly sometimes it is a bit of a struggle, but I, I'm, like I said, I've been doing more with other people and I really enjoyed that, so it's good. Uh, Gavin, do you find it hard when there's no audience to uh, push you on? Um, well, I guess, I mean, uh, my last couple of albums have been solo albums, so I'm kind of used to working on my own. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's different, but I'm, uh, we'll probably get to it later, but I'm starting to work on a new project, which is not me on my own anymore, which is actually quite nice, because it does mean I've got a completely new perspective to bounce off of, and that is actually causing a lot of inspiration for new creative work. And um, yeah, I'm writing songs at the moment that have come out pretty much out of nowhere and aren't specifically for an agenda but so that's been nice and a bit different for me it's not how normally how i work so that's good so all three of us are really active i think in uh, what we call grassroots venues small venues even though i think one of us has perhaps played in a rather bigger venue um <laughs> as in royal albert hall <laughs> but normally <laughs> normally we work in smaller grassroots venues and they are really in danger of going under some of them i think music venues trusted 90 percent are in danger of going under how do you think we can um do something to make sure that isn't the case? Well, first of all, I'm sure that there is somewhere in the Facebook page a mention towards that link 
um, where people can donate. So if it's something that they are passionate about as an audience, um, then please do donate to the Music Venues Trust because Rich is absolutely right. 90% is a staggering, I mean, it's just, it's almost the entire, you know, I mean, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? I'm not going to say anything stupid because 90% is, I think we all get that. Um, so if you are watching and you feel moved to donate, then please, please do. Um, I think we as artists, we had a cracking day the other day with the hashtag Let The Music Play. Yeah. Um, and we were very lucky to have, obviously, some bigger names in there. Um, over 1,500 big acts put their name to that. So it's just about trying to raise awareness, really. And, and yeah, like for the likes of myself and, and Gavin here, just doing the little bits and bobs that we can do online and trying to draw attention to it. That's kind of as much, as much as we can do really. So, yeah. 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 Gavin, did you have anything to add to that? Um, well, I think, I, th I think I saw the other day that even the Royal Albert Hall, it looks like it might struggle. So, you know, it, does. it comes in all sizes. Um, yeah. I mean, I think as musicians, we've got to cling on in there. I think it's going to be a difficult time. We definitely can't rely on this government because they've got no interest in supporting the arts um, for obvious reasons. Um, they don't need us to be uh, showing all their faults for them, which is generally what we'd be doing right now. So um, I think we've got to, as musicians, got to stick this out for as long as we can. And we need we need the public that would normally be coming to gigs to be really behind the music industry and to realise what they'll lose if the music industry falls apart. Because life without music, as far as I'm concerned, is just not worth living. So, you know, I think I think we've all got to be together on this and and however we can do that things like this and people like frank turner and all those other people are doing stuff i think we've just got to work together to get through this somehow so well well said both you um as mark mentioned at the top of this description of this video there is a link to the uh, gofundme campaign that music venues trust are organizing that's for the general one for the whole country there are generic specific ones for different venues if you've got a particular venue you want to support i know the portland arms uh, campaign is closed I think but uh, Creature Sound in Swansea is still raising money as are places all over uh, all over the country. So I was going to start by talking in a bit more detail to Gavin if that's all right. I was going to start off talking about your route map of your musical journey so far. Maybe I'll start by showing a couple of pictures from the repeat scrapbook. It was my sharing works. So <laughs> hopefully um, it's a bit small um, with, I'll make oh it. yeah, I remember that gig. That was at the um, that was the old man on the moon. We, it was Halloween. Yeah. Hence, hence why I'm dressed as the crow. If, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I like to wear a lot of makeup in those days, so that was a good excuse. That one. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Clean shaven. Look how young you look. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm sure Charlie and Craig will be grateful for that picture being shown. <laughs> so there's a there's a very um holy bible uh, era i would have said yeah you can't imagine uh, who i might be influenced by yes uh yeah there they are somewhere yeah i still i've still got the jacket so that's still knocking about i can't fit in it anymore but i've still got it oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't know where this is one i found on your facebook i i don't know uh, that's my that's my friend's old flat in st ives yeah i i would imagine there were probably a few drinks involved that night um <laughs> but what's interesting is my my hair's come full circle because of lockdown so i had very very long hair for a long time and it's back so thanks to no hairdressers being available at current time <laughs> <laughs> excellent and then oh good timing actually good time with the manix one because i see a long time manix fan rachel gannon has just joined the uh, joined the video so hi rachel you can see uh, one me. more picture i really like that one um uh, what, what's that all about? So that was that was the warm up show for the last album launch. So that's at the Corner House. So uh, yeah, that was great fun. It was um, yeah. So the, I, I, these are some of my my good friends. So it was nice to play on stage with them and uh, have a good run out. It was a good show that night. And uh, that's me doing something. Showed a bit of mid riff there. Getting into <laughs> it. As you do. The, so the Corner House and the Blue Moon are the sort of places that along the Portland we need to protect, aren't we? Because Oh man, I've had so many good nights at all those places. Yeah, and yes. the thought, well, it was when we lost the boat race, that was devastating to go through that kind of stuff again when, we, when it's taken us this amount of time to kind of build up to having some strong venues again, I think would be, yeah. Would I think be, the slightly smaller space at the uh, corner house is really important as well. Definitely. Yeah, you need all sizes. I mean, for, you know, the, the artists just starting out, you know, sometimes you want to be in a smaller venue, you, you need that range, otherwise it just all dies. Oh, yes, I remember this one. Oh, there you go, yeah. Blue Moon, uh, Martin is right, it's called Blue Moon now, yeah. 
That was yeah. your album launch. It was, yeah. That was God. When was that? Two, oh, two years ago. Bloody hell. <laughs> Where does the time go? Yes, that was good. I was, um, I was running that with you, but I was also doing some child minding at the same time. I had to keep driving back and forward. I remember. You are. You're very, <laughs> very good at multitasking. Yes. yes. Yes, that was a really good night. Yes. And. Oh, oh, that was that was my first album. Uh, oh, that's nice. Yeah. So um, these guys sang on my first album on the last song, which I wrote for my wife, Ali, if she's listening. Hello. She's watching. Yes, indeed. Yes, she is. She's somewhere over there in the house. Um, but yeah. And so these guys, these guys were kind of in the crowd and then we just pulled them up for the end to to, to do their bit, which was amazing. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. It's like a choir, wasn't it, at the end of the night? Yeah, that's what you need. So yes. yeah, that was that was another very special night. I can't see you amongst them all, but I believe you were there as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Where, <laughs> where am I? Maybe I've stage dived in, you know. So, yes. Yeah, well, I'm not there. Yeah. Oh, there's and then go straight up today. His, this is earlier tonight. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that that wasn't meant to come up, but anyway. Those handsome yeah. looking chaps. So there, that's a bit of a memory lane. You've been playing in bands for a long time. Did you start when you were at school? I did, yeah. So um, I don't know if I want to admit it, but I started playing when I think when I was about ten or eleven. So that's getting on for nearly thirty years now. God. <laughs> so yes. Uh, yes. yeah. So yeah, started then, and then you know, band competitions, all that kind of stuff that w went on at school and talent shows, and then kind of uh, through university, and then I, I yeah, I think it was post university that I really got into it seriously, and. So, so like me, it's really fair to say that um, Manic Street Preachers played quite a, a role in your um, development musically, aesthetically and so on. Yeah. So, yeah, when I was 16, there was not a, an inch of wall that was not covered by a Manic picture. So um, they were permanently on my on my record player, on my CD player. Um, yeah, they're the most important band in my life. I, I still listen to them all the time. Um, hence why I've still got my old posters. If you, yeah, that's that, this, you can't see it, but that's my uh, my six form art project was yeah. a picture of them, which is this there. There's, there's pictures of them all over in this room. So yeah, they were very important to me. Still, are. have you been listening to the Manix podcast at all? I haven't. No. Um, so I, yeah, I do need to do that. Yes. Mixed feelings about it myself, but maybe that's not the time. <laughs> okay. But, well, it's difficult. Um, yeah. I, was, I mean, having yeah, when, when I read read with with drawn traces, I had mixed feelings about that. It's difficult when you're someone else is assessing the band that you love so much yes indeed when they're special to you for personal reasons as well yeah how easy did you find it to develop your own sound and your own songwriting skills and your own look when you're in awe of a band in such a way um i pr i tried to copy the manics for probably about 20 years um <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the first review that my first band ever got said, said that we were a horrible mix of the manic street preachers and bon jovi um, that's perfect. That's what Richie would have wanted. <laughs> well, I know they didn't mean it in a nice way, though. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, it's taken a while to realise that I can't sing like James Dean Bradfield. I can't play the guitar like James Dean Bradfield, and I'm no way near as clever as Ricky and James, uh, uh, Ricky and Nick, Richie and Nicky. So um, yeah, I, I think um, it comes with age. You know, just we've, when you start to feel a bit more comfortable on your own skin, and that took me a bit of time. And I think now I'm in a place where. I'm certainly still influenced by, by them, but um, you know, I think I'm comfortable enough to just kind of do my thing and, and whatever comes out is, is, is what my sound is, whatever that is. And what, went, <laughs> what was behind the decision to move from being in part of a band to being um, your own person? Um, well, I guess the band, I was in a few bands and I, I just always really wanted to record an album. And I think the politics of a, ba of, of a band scenario just meant it never happened for various reasons. I know probably at that time I was probably quite difficult as a person to be in a band with. Um, thankfully, I've mellowed a lot with age and that's probably not an issue so much now. So I, I think I just got really frustrated and I was like, well, I'm just going to do it on my own because if I die and I haven't ever produced an album, I will be a very, you know, it'll be, it'll be a big regret for me. So I just wanted to go and record one. So I had lots of songs kicking around. I pulled them together and um, yeah, I'm really glad I did it because it put me on a, put me on a, another, another path that I'm, wouldn't have anticipated being on so it was a, I'm glad I did it. Was it more scary or a bit more direct being on a record that's got your name on it rather than a band name on it does it feel like you're exposing yourself a bit more? Yeah a little bit um, but at the same time I, I'm a bit of a control freak so it does make it a lot easier when it's just you and a producer and like, yeah, obviously you've got musicians and people coming in doing stuff for you um, 
So it was nice for me to have a bit of control for those first two albums. Certainly the first album. The second album, I let that go a little bit and we had a bit more. It was a bit looser. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think now I'm in a place where I, I kind of want to play with others again. Right. But that's what you were hinting at earlier, maybe. It was, yes. 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 Um, we just saw the song Lovely Day. What was the most lovely day you've had during lockdown? Apart from today, obviously. Apart from today, obviously. Yes. So um, <laughs> I, I guess like um, earlier this week, me and Ali went um, for a walk. We discovered some woodland that we didn't know was near us. So we both we both like nature and, and animals and just being outside. So out out for out for a picnic, wander through the woodland, see what we see. No rush, no stress. Just you know, a nice calm day. Even if the sun's not shining, that was good for us. So excellent. Yeah. That sounds really nice. So people have found they've got a bit more time for themselves, or some people. Yeah. Yes, which has been really important. Hopefully won't go back to being quite so mad as we were before which is no. partly to blame the situation at the moment the way the world is yeah I think one so. more question before we actually play a song okay um, you, you've played lots of festivals in your yeah. time yeah around and about which bands would you like to support you on an ideal festival living or dead existing or non or not existing anymore um well, it's going to be a bit arrogant to say I'd want these bands to support me, but I'd, you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd love to be on a bill, obviously, with the Manics, although I've met them once and I made a complete fool out of myself. So I'd want to be on the bill with them, but not meet them because I'll just be terrified. <laughs> um, well, I guess all my favourite bands, so the Manics, Feeder, the Beatles, obviously, the Clash, um, Aerosmith. Bowie. Um, yeah, we watched Bowie at Glastonbury the other night and I'm, I'm so, so, he's, he's one of my so gutted that I never saw him live for people so yeah there, there's lots of uh, yeah, I could go on I mean and then and then all the great people I've played with locally so you know I'd love to if, you, if you're going to have those big bands on the stage you want the local bands as well so the likes of Bu Bouquet of Dead Crows and, and Mark and everyone else I play with um, because we're a, a really tight circuit here and, and Mark and I were saying the other day you don't realise it, you know, you have, you know, each year you bump across all these different people you play with and you see, maybe see them three times a year, but lockdown happens and then suddenly you don't see them anymore and yeah. don't catch up. You miss what they're doing and it's, um, so yeah, everyone together, come on, a big <laughs> festival, let's do it. I think we can sell some tickets to that festival. I, I would like to put the Beatles next to the Manics and see if they fight after James says, I laugh when Lennon got shot. Well, he, he, he hasn't he hasn't he hasn't uh, sung he that for a while. That for a bit, has he? Yeah. And they did try to excuse themselves from what that line actually meant. But yes, still, I think that yeah might not go down too well. And yeah, possibly maybe not. Don't put them on a stage with REM either. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. You're going to play us a song now. Then we're going to ask you a few more questions. If anybody's right. got some intelligent or even stupid questions you'd like me to ask Gavin, if you could put them in the chat during this song, and then we're going to talk to Gavin a bit more before we hear from Mark. So uh, whenever you're ready, uh, take it away. Okay. Do what you want to, do what you like. Cause that's why the future, what you leave behind is in your soul. So you do what you like Take what you want to Take what you like Scotch the planet Leave it to die You think it's your own Endless supply So you take what you like Do what you like How do you want to How much you like In your concrete jungle Nothing can survive Through your Production line You do what you like Until it all explodes 
go We won't do what we like Virtual clapping going on there, nicely done. It can be hard to play on Zoom. Uh, I, you made it sound really good, nicely done. We'll get you to play another song in a couple of minutes. A uh, couple, couple more questions. As I say, if anybody else wants to ask some questions, uh, feel free, but I've got some otherwise. Um, you've used, often used your music to promote a variety of causes. Do you think there's space at the moment for committed music in the current climate? Uh, well, definitely, always. Um, I know some each to their own obviously but I've always thought music is a powerful tool and art in general as I alluded to earlier for holding a mirror up to society um, I've sometimes shied away from it and sometimes come back I always sometimes get a bit fearful about what the audience might react and putting them off too much but I think there's we're in such a dire position as a society now and we're at a tipping point and I think we you know we definitely can't trust politics we can't trust the political system we can't trust our economic system I think the only people we can trust are ourselves so I think as musicians the, the thing I realize that I can do is use my music um, to try and encourage positive change and it's a, it's a fine balance there are things that I want to knock people over the head about and say why are you doing that but it's trying to find the right medium to encourage debate and not just knock people down and it, because I think if you just shut people down it's very different difficult to change their mind so it's just trying to find the right balance of, of you know you know calling out what needs to be called out but also trying to open a dis discussion and bring people along and change the world for the better hopefully you've always been very uh, vocally support for love music hate racism which has always been really appreciated and unfortunately it's become even more relevant at the moment now yeah well and i think um yeah i mean it's something that's always been on my mind but not I mean and obviously you know my various other causes that I'm vocal about I you know having converted to veganism a few years ago and I think I think as a society I mean we, on our repeat call the other the other week you were asking you know what can we do to change this the, the way things are going and I thought about it afterwards and we've, there's so many causes we're fighting at the moment and I feel like we've all got to channel our energies together you know whether whether you're fighting racism or you know the oppression of animals you know uh, gender inequality um sexual inequality whatever um the problems we have are not political they're they're, they're a systemical problem you know we have a problem with our system at the moment that benefits uh, the minority uh, benefits um a certain type of individual and it benefits them to oppress certain groups of people animals whatever and i think you know really we've got to start coming together and fighting as one because the vegan issue which i i've learned a lot about in the last few years isn't a, a, it's not a single issue you know the, the use of animals for consumption for profit is comes from the same place as why black people have historically been abused and why women are, are treated in the way they are so yeah that's sorry got far too deep there but I, yeah so um we've got lots to fight for and we've got to fight you know i think Good, good answer, good detailed answer. Um, you've got fans in Histon. Hello, the Edmondsons, who's, uh, who I taught in the past. Hi, Luca and Co. Nice to see you uh, watching. Uh, Luca's a guitar player as well. Um, uh, we're talking about the Manic Street Preachers podcast, which you've not listened to, which no. doesn't matter because you can still answer this question. Criminal. If there was going to be somebody presenting a podcast on uh, Gavin Chapel Bates, who would you like uh, to present it? Um, do I have to just pick one person or can it be? No, a team a, is fine. A conglomerate. Or, can I have two answers as well? I'm just thinking. Yes, of course you can. Yes. It's, 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 it's rampant capitalism at its best. I just want more, more, more. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, I guess um, oh, that's a difficult one. I think on the one hand, it would be really interesting to 
put my family round a microphone and get them uh, be interested to hear their objective opinions because they've seen me yeah they must have seen some interesting changes in me through my musical journey so that would be interesting to know it would, um, yes. and then I think from a musical perspective it would be good to hear what former bandmates current bandmates you know what their perspective is because I know I certainly know that I was a, have been a very difficult person to work with in the past so it would be nice to see their opinions on me as a person and as a musician and how that's developed but yeah I, I doubt I'll ever do it but you know I like that idea yes <laughs> yes Maybe we should do that in the Cambridge scene. Maybe we should all, like, you know, do a podcast of each other. That'd be interesting. <laughs> interesting, yes. Uh, so uh, what's next for you musically, then? What's next for Gavin Chapel Bates? Um, so I've got two things on the go. So um, so Peace on Your Plate, which is my, not mine, it's a kind of communal uh, music musical collective. Um, we had a Christmas single, um, which was our first single, and uh, got to number 48 in the charts, and we've we're just finished recording our second single. Um, it's just about to be mastered at Abbey Road. So um, that's going to be out in September. Um, so that's pretty exciting. And then the other thing I alluded to earlier, um, if I'm honest, you know, playing solo has its perks, but I've also missed having a band around me. And I've also really missed making a lot of noise. Um, <laughs> that there is something to be said for being on stage with... Um, three, four other people and just being loud. So, um, yeah, so my good friend Charlie, who I was in Bacata with, you saw him earlier, um, asked me if I was interested in recording an album together um, of, a, you know, quite a specific genre that he wanted to create. So uh, I said, yes, we've been tinkering with some ideas. We've got about four or five almost finished songs. And, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. It's going to be noisy but melodic, hopefully. Oh, interesting. Something to look forward to after lockdown then. Yeah, definitely. So before we ask you to play a second song, um, how can people follow what you're up to? Um, thankfully, no one else has got married um, and double barreled their name the same way that I have. So I think if you just search Gavin Chapel Bates, I, I'm so far the only one that comes up. So uh, usual places, Facebook, website, gavinchapelbates.com. Um, you can find all the stuff you need to find. Excellent. And here's, here's a song from you to finish off the that. Yeah, you? I'm just going to check my tunings. Cause, um, oh, yes. I should have, you know, done done the professional thing and changed my strings sometime in the last six years. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that? Why would you do overrated? Such a thing? Right. Yeah. So I'll leave you with this one. This is for everyone out there that's listening. This is from uh, my first album, and the music video appropriately was filmed at the Portland Arms at the uh, very gig that you showed the photo of earlier. So this Excellent. feels like an appropriate one to finish with. Oh, 
Nicely done. Thank you, Gavin. Um, don't disappear because we're going to talk all together at the end. So we can, as Gavin says, you can find him on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, GavinJapelBates.com, and so on. Martin says he can't wait to see you playing in a in a live gig. And also, there's a queue of forty people for the hairdressers. So <laughs> maybe don't rush down there now. <laughs> it's staying. I'm going to get it even longer. Yes. Right. So now we're going to talk to Mark for 20 minutes or so now. Mark Ellis is here, as you can see him. Hopefully. Hello. Excellent job. So you were sadly, or sort of sadly, sadly yesterday I was meant to be driving to Cambridge and we were meant to hear a young people's gig today that um, Luca, who I've mentioned, was meant to be playing in. And you were meant to be launching an Alma album. Can you tell us a bit about this album that was meant to be coming out uh, yesterday, please? Yeah, the album that, that, that never was as well so far. Um... So Rhiannon, the singer, the new singer of Elma, she's based in Norwich. Um, and we just started putting this record together and we were basically kind of demoing it ourselves before then taking it to a studio. And it was kind of in, in that phase. Um, and then obviously a lockdown kind of put an end to it. Um, it was quite interesting because if there happens to be anyone that heard the first Elma record, you'll know that it's very 60s pastiche um, a lot of influence from the Ronettes and Aretha Franklin, um, Dusty Springfield and all of that sort of stuff going on, which is really good fun to make because like all of that 60s production and trying to be faithful to that was 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 kind of cool because you ended up watching lots of cool documentaries as well as so how, how they did it and all that sort of stuff. Um, but um, the second record, obviously, was conscious that we wanted to make it more in keeping with Rhiannon. So it was still going to be a bit vintage styley, but there was a, uh, Rhiannon's really great jazz singer. Um, and so she was kind of bringing that Joni Mitchell vibe in. Um, and I wanted to rock out a bit more because I was missing that. So it was kind of an interesting combo in the songs that we've got done thus far of a little, a little bit of a mixture of, of all of that sort of, so a bit of jazz, a bit of 60s pastiche, and a bit of rock, which all sounds crazy when you when you put say, list them separately, but it was it was sounding nice. So sadly, we haven't got there yet. But I'm sure at some point we'll, we will get there, and and it'll feel all the better for it. So yeah, indeed, indeed, because the album has been um, received incredibly well. You've packed out the Portland and lots of other venues as well. Have you been surprised by the success that Elmer has had already? I, I was surprised. Um, but also pleased, <laughs> which sounds yeah, like a really, exactly. really, like, sort of really obvious thing to say, because obviously you'd be pleased that people like what you do, and that's that's a given. But I think pleased because I'd worked so hard um, on it, and I kind of kept telling myself, again, with that 60s pastiche thing, I was like, there is an audience for it. People do like this, and there is an audience for everything. And I think if you just keep going, it'll be all right. Um, and Ellie, the first singer, um, 
you know, she did a cracking job on, on joining me in that journey. And and everyone that met her, as again with Rhiannon, she, both of them are really personable people. And I think that, as well, along with good music, I think good people kind of really helped. So everywhere we went, we were really lucky because we just seemed to make friends. So I think it's as much about the as us as it was the, the music, if that makes sense. Yes. So I was going to ask you what you've learned from your time in music um, in the variety of bands you've played with. Have you learned anything about the biz? Are the things, the music biz, are the things you wish you'd done differently? I'm thinking particularly of Ham Fatter, because you do some quite high profile things with Ham Fatter. Oh, yes. How you long have you got? <laughs> or what? How long have you got on that one subject? Okay. Um, so for those that aren't familiar, um, just very super quickly, a little summary. So in 2008, my old band, Ham Fatter, we went on Dragon's Den and we got an investment. Um, and this is before the days of uh, Pledge Music and uh, GoFundMe and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and it was seen by to be by a lot of people to be kind of quite an innovative thing. Um I mean, that's the story in itself. And I, I mean, I'd love, I won't go too deep into that. I do, I was very naive then. And the leader of that band was Owen, who did a fantastic job. And I, I've a lot to be grateful for, to him for, because we toured Austria and we did, I mean, we did all sorts of wild stuff that when you're 17, 18, it's just like it's sort of mind blowing really. And I'm very, very lucky, but I wish that I'd been a bit more uh, grown up because by that point I was 22. And I was so caught up in the, <laughs> we've made it, I'm a rock star. Rah, rah, rah. And it's just, it was incredibly naive. Um, and I definitely took things for granted. And I've always said since that sort of imploded in on itself that that actually, well, I spent a few years being properly sad about it. But I think, um, I think you come out, it, it means nothing if you don't come out the other side having learnt, you learnt your lesson. And I think, I think the lesson is don't, don't be an, an ass <laughs> and, uh, and don't take things for granted. Um, you know, because Gavin alluded to that in himself, I think, in early days. I think it's easy when you're, a, particularly when you're a man and you're being in a band, to, uh, to let the testosterone get ahead of you and you sort of behave like you're uh, Liam Gallagher or mick jagger or whatever and actually you're just a, <laughs> just a dude in the pub and you maybe need to calm down um as i did to gavin let's look at a couple of old pictures i'm not entirely sure what order they're in oh, that, hello. Like the speak of the devil and he may appear <laughs> <laughs> so so there we are so and the guy i'm pointing at the screen you can't see that that was silly of me so the guy just uh if you go up and left the other guy that's it yep. that's jamie he used to be quite a big deal around town did, um, yep. in cambridge and he became our manager um and i think it was kind of his uh baby uh, idea that we that we did this because we'd had a couple of uh record deals presented to us by sort of like domino i think and somebody else but they were of course they were terrible terrible deals um so i think it was jamie's idea to to do the dragon stand thing and kind of stick it to the man and it, it almost worked <laughs> almost worked um i can't remember what i put next oh there we go uh, I've, do you know, so uh, to those that um, don't know me, I've just moved house and obviously that means having a big old sort out and going through all sorts of boxes of stuff. Um, and I just found my own copy of that the other day and I just thought, man, I love that artwork. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And seven inch vinyls are really nice, aren't they anyway? I think. Oh, it's a lovely little thing, yeah. So, oh, look, <sighs> I know what that is. I know... That's the Portland, isn't it? It's definitely the Portland. What gig would that have been? It's pretty soon after renovation, because looking at the sound um, stuff on the wall on the left. I'm looking at the white high watt amp, which wasn't mine. It belongs to Bleach. Was oh, that... right. Yeah, yeah I think it was a band called Bleach. That's right. And I might have been playing on my own at this point. Cause... You were anxious. That was a Mark Ellis solo. Yeah, because uh, as I kind of alluded to earlier, I think we were talking about writing and writing for other people and yeah. stuff, and my confidence has really kind of gone up and down um, whenever whenever I've been being me, <laughs> which I think is, I think a lot of people experience that just in life, not just in music. Um, but this is definitely one of those ones where I was, was, was at it. <laughs> so, <gasps> And there you go. Gosh. Really, really at it. Yeah, <laughs> Gavin just <laughs> twisting his head. 
that was the last sideshow gig before Alma. And actually, you've probably got a date stamp, so please put me right if I'm making this up. But this might have been actually at Gavin's launch gig. I think it was actually, yes. With, yes, the, with the, the one with the, with the choir and stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. So, um, so there you go. And that was a great night. That was a, a really busy room. How we missed that. Um, yeah, good times. I, I sold that Les Paul. I, don't, yeah. I sort of don't regret it, but then every time I see a picture, I'm like, oh, don't. <laughs> put a picture of Elmer up there, but I, I neglected to do that. I thought it was too up to date. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any link going between Elmer, Sideshow, Ham Fatter, yourself, as a solo person? Um, that's I because you, you did give us the questions in advance, and I've still struggled to uh, to come up with a, a reasonable answer to this. I just think. I think in all of the music that I create, it's possibly, I try to be concise, if that makes sense. I love, so Gavin mentioned the Beatles earlier, and I read a, a lovely story about when they were trying to write songs for help, because they'd started doing the film, but they hadn't actually got any songs for the film yet. And they were in um, a hotel room somewhere, basically just squirming away. And apparently they used to do things like they kind of do the verse, first verse in the chorus or something and they do it to a stopwatch and they kind of allow the stopwatch to m make their next decision sometimes right. in the songwriting process. Um, or at least kind of if they kind of get maybe up to a bridge and they'll go, oh no, that's two minutes, 10, that's far too long. You know, we've still got to do another chorus. So and I, most of the things that I do are usually kind of about three minutes long. I try to be kind of catchy um, and I like the trick because, I mean, obviously they were incredible at getting so much musical information into such a short period of time um, that was just so clever. Um, so I, I, I kind of try to do that in everything that I do, really. Um, and I mean, Ham Fatter Owen was a songwriter, but I mean, I was always trying to write an interesting drum part or something. I didn't want to just bash it out, you know? Yeah. Would you like to play us something now? Then we've got a couple more questions. Yeah. If anyone's got any questions for Mark that wants to uh, send them in, please do so during this song. Um, while Mark's getting himself ready, if anybody wants to donate to the Music Venues Trust Crisis Appeal to keep small venues going, the link is at the top of the video. I think you can just click that and support Music Venues Trust, as we discussed earlier. Right, Mark. Nice, cool. So let's play an Elmer song um, off of Dreamland. Uh, the first album. This is called California, um, and it's kind of about wanting to not just go to California specifically, but just go and live the dream or live a happy life and things like that. And this is one of the ones I'm pleased with musically, getting a lot of information into a short space of time. <laughs> but I'll, I won't get nerdy. We'll just try and enjoy the song. <laughs> Heavy, heavy are the rocks that weigh me down And the border patrol won't let me leave this town Don't get me wrong, I've always liked my home But as long as I stay, I'll never be full grown Take me to California Where we can bathe in the summer sun Our sugar-coated dreams will come true Let's go someplace new Uh-huh Pack bags, I'm ready, steady, good to go I'll take the fast train, what's the point in being slow? I've got my songbook, make everybody look I'll find my way onto the silver screen Let's go to California Where we can bathe in the summer sun Our sugar-coated dreams will come true Let's go someplace new. Uh huh. Now 
Let's go to California Where we can bathe in the summer sun Our sugar-coated dreams will come true Let's go someplace new Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nicely done. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Trying to get trying to get the audience in. There we are. Yes. <laughs> Good job. Oh, this is better than your regular Facebook Live because at least I've got a couple of people clapping. <laughs> yes. yes, and there are some claps coming in on the uh, There's an awesome from Paul Edmondson and great stuff, Mark, from Stuart McCloy. Oh, um, thank you very much. There we go. And some hearts and things floating up as well that I can't understand. Right, <laughs> a couple more questions for Mark Ellis and then uh, we'll hear him play another song uh, or watch a video, I think it is, isn't it? And then we'll be finished. So uh, what advice would you give to the 16-year-old you if you met them down a gig saying oh i want to start a band well i think i've already said it anyway, don't take things for granted yeah yeah work work hard and don't take things for granted good advice yes if you could feature on a compilation album with any bands past present future that's gonna be a bit difficult but any bands past or present <laughs> who would you like to be on alongside oh lordy uh, that list is like it's endless isn't it um would let's just let's be wild it would be great to be alongside the beatles and dusty springfield i like any six greats from the 60s uh people i love now courtney barnett uh weezer um arctic monkeys i think the older they get the better they get that's up for debate with some people yeah. <laughs> um good lord uh when i was a teenager i wanted to be an oasis we've all got our sins um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's probably it. So, greats from the sixties, whoever you want to pop in there, because I'm happy with anyone. Um, and yeah, Courtney Barnett, Oasis, uh, Weezer. Oh my goodness me, I nearly missed that Weezer. Uh, they're probably my biggest. I think you said uh, them twice. Actually, you didn't miss them. I did. I not listen. Oh, there, there you go. Uh, they're, they're, they're the thing that make me feel better. Uh, no matter what what kind of things are going on, they always make me feel better. Well, that um, goes on with the next question, actually, because I was going yes. to ask you, you, I noticed on uh, on your personal Facebook, you've been getting quite angry recently about the way, <laughs> quite, uh, quite rightly. Do you use music to escape from that anger, like you were saying about Weezer, or do you use it to reflect and channel that anger? Or how does music and the world fit together in your view? I think yeah, the two are definitely interlinked, aren't they? And I think um, the, the, the two strongest ways that, are, to, to me, um, uh, that, that they're interlinked um, is is one is fashion music and fashion have always gone together and obviously the other one is music and politics um, and those two are never sort of separate um, in in their own ways um, I was because I was sort of listening to what Gavin was saying and stuff and kind of like the way it's, the way you're changing your process and and kind of just what's going on in life and trying to do sort of something different or, or whatever I think when I uh, when I listen to music, I try and I try to listen to it as an escape. So if I'm in a bad mood, I will pop a record on that I know is going to cheer me up. Um, there's there's that. But then equally, if I'm in a good mood, I'll stick an old Ryan Adams record on and I'll get proper sad. But um, <laughs> but you know, it sort of goes both ways, doesn't it? Um, but when I I've written enough love songs, and I probably will continue to do that on off and on because you know it's the matters of the heart are they're never far away. Um, but I, I'm trying to be more, uh, this is just in the writing, is, is trying to be more objective um, and trying to tell a story a bit more. Um, and also at the moment in particular, certainly the video that you're going to play, um, just kind of writing around the, the situation and stuff, um, whilst also being a little bit cynical and thinking, what can people sing along to and get involved with that actually will probably mean something to them? Um, so I kind of try and think about things a little bit differently um, and, and uh, yes, bring in the matters of life into kind of what I'm doing at the moment without, yeah, it's, I kind of go with the flow, really. So uh, <laughs> final question, I think we're going to play another track after that. Um, yeah. Final question, who are your heroes and heroines in, in any walk of life, music, politics, artistic, sport, any other field of human endeavour or even animal endeavour? <laughs> 
Um, oh my goodness! Now I'm trying to think of a, an, an animal that I, well, could be my hero, but that will be here for a long time. Um, but I mean, when I was growing up, uh, again, when I was thinking about this, when you sent questions yesterday, the political part of me, whilst it's been very vocal recently, I've, it's always been there. Um, and I don't think playing John Lennon's greatest hits on repeat as I was going to sleep when I was 15 helped that very much. <laughs> um, or it probably did help that rather. Um, so there's that. Um, um, in life, uh, currently, um, t- politically, Jacinda Ardern, I think it's universally uh, known that she's done a cracking job for New Zealand, but also kind of given humanity a bit of hope. Um, and this is incredibly corny, but it's, it's genuine, is my other half, Nikki, because um, it's not just like a soppy love thing. Um, and this is in the song I'm going to play in the second verse. I think it's really hard to say um, kind of how you feel at the moment about like politics or whatever, because as Gavin put really well, to try and open a discussion, I'm not always the best at that because I normally open my mouth and then I think later, which is not always a good, good thing. Um, but um, it's, it's, it's not hard to sort of put your opinion out without it turning into a massive, like, ra- raging match. Um, and it's, it's particularly not hard if you're a girl, I think, because it's e- easy to get put down. And, and Nikki, uh, she works for the TUC, Trade Union Congress, um, and she's been, like, she was almost a Labour councillor at one point and stuff. And I think the way that she is just so brave and bold and puts herself out there and uses facts and nuance and stuff. It's a real inspiration to me as, cause I'm quite new to this, like shooting my mouth off about Boris Johnson business. <laughs> um, but trying to kind of learn from someone that actually knows what they're talking about and is, is a good influence um, as well as supporting me in my life and stuff. So she's, um, she's my hero. That's how stuff is. Let's hear the song then. <laughs> Let's hear the song you're going to play. To Gavin and you together to finish with. Lovely, cool. So this is a this is one of the newer solo ones uh, from from the lockdown era. This is called "This Thing Is Better." This thing is better. This thing is better in real life. I want to touch you. I want you to heal my bones When we're apart, honey I get down low Just tell me where, honey And I will go Let's build a house And call it home A place we can dream A place we'll grow Let's be the brave Together strong Stand up to be counted I love how brave you are And you get your facts straight I love how smart you are And all you do you always shine Formidable, honey I thank God you're mine Let's build a house And call it home A place we can dream A place we'll grow Let's be the brave Together strong Build a house and call it home. A place we can dream, a place we'll grow. Let's be the brave, together strong. Nicely done. There's some yeah. having more virtual applause coming up for you there on the comments. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Thank you. So we're just going to finish with a couple of questions uh, to you both. Uh, and then we're going to watch the, uh, the video right at the end. I've got a horrible feeling I didn't let uh, Gavin do his second song. Is that true? No, I played two. You did brilliant. That's all right. Then. If, my maths, <laughs> if, my, if my school maths is good, then I think I did too. You did. I think you did. Actually, yes, I suddenly had a flashback. But anyway, um, so I was going to ask you about your immediate plans because how are you going to re-establish the momentum that you both had before lockdown? Uh, Gavin, do you want to go first because you've had the time off talking? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, so I play in a covers band, so I think that's going to be the hardest thing because. Obviously, that's reliant on playing gigs, and we were we were at, we were getting we were fairly new, so we'd only been together for about a year, and we were just getting to the point where we were we were starting to get known and get bookings and get weddings and things. So that, so I think that's going to take time, and that's hit some of the other guys quite hard because they were quite reliant on that income. Um, so that's going to be tricky, but we'll we're all pros. We'll just get back on and do it as soon as we're allowed to. Uh, the other stuff's easier, I think. The you know writing and recording the. I think obviously with the way the internet is now, you can just release stuff digitally. You can record remotely, so um, which is what I'm doing at the moment with various projects. So um, whatever I, you know, I think as musicians you have to be flexible. We have to adapt. So whatever comes our way, I, I suspect we, we as as musicians will just keep moving with that and make sure we're always here. You can't get rid of us. It's new ways of working, <laughs> isn't it? I've never done these before. March and now I'm doing them every week, so it's learning new ways of yeah. keeping music going. Uh, yeah. Mark, have you got anything to add to that? I think the same, really. I mean, like a lot of musicians, guess what? We don't make uh, a lot of money from playing our own tunes, <laughs> so I do. Uh, I do wedding gigs and all that sort of stuff as well. And so, like Gavin saw a lot of uh, a lot of work go down, and that, that will take a lot of us. Are kind of sort of the odd thing will be there, and we just kind of hope it happens, and then it doesn't happen, and. I think that realistically, we just have to accept that that's going to be a long time before that gets anywhere near normal. Um, with regards to original music, exactly, you can you can put it out whenever you like, wherever you like. Now it's it's a lot easier. So I'm sure that the Elmer stuff will get back on the case. Um, I have actually really enjoyed just personally my little uh, <laughs> resurgence. I guess is that is that the right word? Um, so and I'm I'm loving that. So I feel a lot better about that. And um, yeah, I, like I say I write for a lot of other people as well. So I'm just trying to keep myself busy and then see what sticks. Basically, that's that's my plan. So the penultimate question to you both is almost the same as what we started with, but there may be different people watching now. There's a real danger that the grassroots music scene is going to go under or go under to a large degree because ninety percent ninety percent of a small grassroots venues risk going bust according to Music Venues Trust. What can people do to try and ensure there is a grassroots uh, music scene to come back to? Well, for a start, there is a link. Make sure you go to that link. If you can, if you're not in a position to do it, because I've seen people say this and it's absolutely valid. If you're not in a position to donate, then don't, don't put yourself in trouble. But if you are, please do uh, donate um, to the Musicians Trust. And there's a lot of venues that need your help and they're not always going to get somebody doing a gig to help them out. So if there's somewhere local and dear to you, please donate to that. Um, when the gigs do come back, um, not just the, it might, this might sound a bit funny. I don't mean it to sound funny, but just go to a gig. Um, it's not, it's, I know there's a lot to choose from and, and sometimes it's cool just to go and see the famous bands or just, or your mates or whatever. But you know, if you if you love music, go go to the pub and and therefore the, and just go to a gig. You know, if the band's rubbish, then it doesn't matter. But you've helped out the pub and you've helped out everyone involved, the sound engineer and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, donate now if you can. And when when the gigs are back, please just come to the gigs, and we promise you'll have a good time. Exactly, Gavin. Anything to add to that? Uh, only that. I mean, I think that before COVID, I think they were risks to live music in terms of you know i'm sure mark's seen this you go to a pub and there's just football on every night and uh other things to distract people from live music so i, I suppose one thing i hope lockdown will make people possibly appreciate is you know that you, you just can't replicate a live gig anywhere you know in any other scenario so hopefully people when, when we're allowed will come back and not just support the big acts because it's you know they'll be all right financially and they'll be all right long in, in, in with their longevity so support local music and you know we mark and i are from the cambridge scene and I, I guarantee you pretty much all the gigs you go to in cambridge at the portland arms the blue moon all those 
kind of venues, you get high quality bands. The, the, the level of musicianship around here is amazing. And so you don't need to pay 100 quid to go to the O2. Hmm. You can pay fiver and go and see some awesome bands and, 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 and surprise yourself and have a good, good night out and not have well to said. too far. Well said. Exactly, exactly. Because not only were, were Elmer meant to be playing last night, as I said this afternoon, um, young people, yeah. 10, 11, 12, up to, up to 16 years old, are meant to be taking over the Portland and getting a chance to play. And it's much more fun playing in a place like that than it is playing in a school hall. And if a place <laughs> like that vanishes, that's going to be their chance of performing gone. And that's not, not just a fun afternoon, but it's a whole, for a lot of people, it's about their well-being, how good they feel about themselves, their self-esteem, their future prospects, uh, how they behave at school is all determined, well, can be for some people determined by music. And if there's nowhere to perform, all that is put massively at risk, I would say. Yeah, just, well, to, just to... Uh... Just to just to echo what you said there, Richard, about how that can affect your outcome. Just to really hammer that point home, um, I am not an academic person at all. Um, and if it, if it wasn't for being in bands and things like that, I I don't know what I'd be doing. Um, so it and to and and I had those opportunities, you know, be it a school hall or uh, I remember we uh, there's it used to be a place called Cafe Africa way back. Um, we've got to do a gig in there and it, that gives you a buzz as a young person um, and and can sit you on the right track so it's, it's important for those reasons as well that these places still exist 100 sorry i just yeah, wanted to get that out i think you're absolutely right it's what I've can i hammer can i double up. double hammer and just say uh, <laughs> it, well I hope, if my mum's listening she probably doesn't want to hear this but w without this thing I, I there's a chance i might not be here or i might have gone down some very dark paths and i think having that helped but also the, the the fear of going on stage the first few times and then what you learn as you as a person by having to interact with audiences all that stuff you just don't learn at school and um i'm in a very happy place now and i just think all that experience did me more than school ever did so I'm, i know school is valuable but just as a, for me as an individual so i think just the power of being on stage and the interaction you get with the audience all that kind of stuff is just so important for well-being and development so we need it as a culture and as individuals i think i think you're both right yeah exactly i i'm currently working at a school for uh, kids with behavior issues and one reason i think i assume that i keep getting booked to go back there is because i take the guitar in and it completely calms them down and makes them concentrate and feel good at something whereas they've been told all their life they're rubbish at everything so that's the thing with music. I mean, we talk about politics and all this stuff, but there is no hierarchy to music. There's no, it's a, it's a level up. You can, anyone can access music, absorb music, play music of any genre that they like. It's, it's the great level of art, you know, so yeah, it's for everyone. Exactly. Right. Final and most serious question. So we maybe have some more time, actually. What's best, chips or cream buns? I'm a savoury man, so it's chips. Easy. <laughs> uh, and as a vegan, the cream buns probably got dairy in, so I'll just have to get chips. Oh. <laughs> that was an easy one. Right, we're going to finish with the video. Thanks, people who've been watching. Um, do donate if you can afford to. If you can't afford to, share the link or something like that, whatever. Every little helps. Um, next week, Friday, hopefully, I'll be interviewing with somebody else who's a little less known than these two. Uh, he's in a, <laughs> a small band called Ash. So I'm, I'm talking to Rick from Ash next Friday, five o'clock, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Hopefully see you for that. Thanks to these two for sparing not only yes, tonight, but also yesterday, trying to get online. Thanks to people who've turned up today. Thanks for having us. Thanks to Martin for saying chips as well, and Ed for saying great songs, guys. Um, do you want to say anything about this video that we're going to finish with, Mark? Yeah, so just very briefly, again, a lockdown song. I was just trying to kind of keep my mind busy. Um, and the story goes, so the song I just played a minute ago, um, I was in a really bummed out place. I think, I think we all experienced that during the height of proper, proper lockdown, um, ups and downs. And I was, I was struggling. Um, and this guy messaged me to say, I love that song that you did. Um, I've started animating a video for it. Is that okay? <laughs> to, to which I went, yes, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and that really turned the way I felt on my head. And it's because he reached out to me and it's someone I wouldn't regularly speak to. Um, he's a lovely guy, um, but we just were different paths than that. Um, and, it, and it really hit home. And this song is called Reach Out. So it's about the importance of looking out for each other and making sure that we're all all right. Perfect way to end. Good job.
Yeah.